Yeah, what I wanted to do today is uh, actually, so last week, uh, kind of an, an impromptu, I just kind of walked around my property and uh, discussed why, uh, I think I said, this is the reason why I moved to rural Japan. And that video actually got a lot of uh, attention and comments and so i kind of realized that uh it's probably something that a lot of people are more interested in so what i'm gonna do today is uh again do another quick impromptu however on my way to work uh so right now i'm actually kind of getting ready getting ready to uh go to work and um i need to sort out some of this garbage here before i uh head on out I figured I'd take you out for a quick uh, drive because uh, it's a gorgeous drive uh, going in. As you can see right now, the uh, all the clouds and uh, fog uh, along the mountainside. So it's going to be really beautiful. So I'm going to mount you on the on the dash with my GoPro and kind of uh, show you the road uh, going towards uh, Iwakuni City from. From the countryside it's about a 40 minute drive i mean this video will definitely will not be 40 minutes long a couple of things i wanted to discuss while i was doing that is um you know why i decided to move to rural japan considering that you know you always have to have those basic needs such as uh, reliable transportation utilities you know water electricity uh internet mail delivery medical dental all those kind of things that you have to worry about especially as you start getting a little older in age yeah please follow me along and uh let's go ahead and discuss some of those topics and if you have any questions comment below again if you like what you see please uh, hit like and subscribe and uh share so yeah and actually and it might get a little noisy because i'm gonna be driving my my k truck right now right now we're just down to two vehicles at the moment uh so i can be driving that one so hopefully it's not a little it's not a little too loud in there i hope you enjoy the ride and uh let's go ahead and drive to iwakuni as i mentioned we're gonna go ahead and drive to all the way to iwakuni city probably uh, bring you along for most of the ride and then uh speed it up in the areas that are not that exciting and then as i enter the military installation i'll turn off the camera however uh so as we're driving i you know i want you to enjoy the beautiful scenery of uh rural japan the countryside uh, and one of the reasons why i decided to move to rural japan and then and hopefully this is kind of educational for you as you're considering uh your quest on uh, or possibly you know moving to rural japan or taking on a, uh, a Kia renovation or even uh, starting a brand new house on a, on a relatively cheap piece of land. Before we leave, uh, I, I just want to go ahead and give a shout out to uh, Benton Homestead. There's a young couple uh, living in the Shimanami Kaido area, but uh, they are kind of an example of, I guess, uh, taking the leap of bravery and uh and moving all the way to japan even though japan is relatively not the easiest country to migrate and uh obtain residencies and whatnot however they are doing it through i believe uh through starting a uh, business visa and uh by raising bees and they're also renovating in akia and in rural japan so please go check out their uh their channel and uh give them some support uh they i believe they're trying to achieve the thousand subscribers so they can become monetized let's go ahead and help them out there too as we drive down the down the mountain uh, a couple of things i wanted to discuss is the uh the basics of life uh, that you need to consider when you move to rural japan such as you know medical food transportation all those basic needs that you need to consider if you are going to move to rural japan uh, and also the cost of living and quite frankly um later on i'll do a video um, and probably have to collect more data maybe about a year's worth of data of uh, the actual cost day to day to day uh, the basic needs of life your, your utilities and whatnot uh, but also, you know, do, do you have reliable utilities such as electricity, water, uh, internet, mail, uh, delivery service, and so on? And transportation, you know, so yeah, right now I have a driver's license. I can drive. I have cars. 
but at some point I may reach a uh, stage in my life where I cannot drive. So I need to consider that, you know, what do I need to get out of here? Or do I just uh, move out of the, the countryside and move to a bigger city, whether it's still in Japan or back to Mexico or United States or something like that? Um, and also, you know, reliable transportation for further distances, such as, you know, the train station, uh, an airport to get out of here. So as we are driving along, um, I'm going to go ahead and try to talk, uh, touch on those topics. Let's go ahead and drive down to Iwakuni. So I mentioned it before, the, if you are going to move to rural Japan, I believe the first thing that you need to do is get one of these little K-trucks. Um, this, this truck in particular is a uh, Sambar, uh, Subaru Sambar, uh, I believe it's a 1993 uh, five-speed uh, manual transmission, has a little supercharger, uh, air conditioner, which does not work right now, which is why my windows are down, it's gonna be a little noisy. Um, airbags, uh, but just, just a really, really strong little truck it can get you in uh, anywhere you want, quite frankly. Um, so yeah, so right now we're driving through town. So right here on my left is we have an old hospital. And so talking about the different, um, you know, basic needs of life that you need to consider is a medical care. So right here, there's an older hospital. However, just about a minute from here, next to the convenience store, they are building a brand new big hospital. Right now it's just basically the foundation and the parking lot, but uh, it seems to be a rather impressive uh, um, uh, hospital that they're building. And as we're going through right here, this is kind of, I guess the hub of uh, the, the commercial center. Uh, we have, uh, Diller here for uh, to get uh, tractors and whatnot. Uh, was a uh, 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 Kubota. I stopped by the other day to inquire about a riding lawnmower. They do have them. Uh, we have Sun Mart, which is a grocery store. It has all the basic uh, needs for groceries. Uh, let me see. We're coming up to the gas station, police station, and the convenience store hardware store so right here really within less than a minute or so I have all the basic needs so if I ever uh, need to get something I can I can get that and then about 20-30 uh, minute drive is when you start getting into the major business district of uh, Iwakuni so there I can get all the other basics and if that is not enough I can make it to Hiroshima in, uh, in about an hour or so too. So, so talking about the uh, utilities for example so so far we have been living at our place for about uh, 45 days or so uh, and we have uh, gosh I mean really really reliable electricity not once have we lost electricity uh, we have very really reliable water uh, the fiber the internet service is super fast uh, no problems there whatsoever uh, mail delivery system I mean just to give an example uh, the, uh, this was work related however I had a small package sent via FedEx from the United States that arrived to my doorstep uh, here in, let me close the window because I think it's probably gonna be a little windy there. Sorry about that if you couldn't hear before. So, so yeah, I had um, a small package that was sent from the United States via FedEx that arrived here uh, at my house uh, in a little motorcycle uh, mail delivery system which is the, the mail delivery system here in Japan uh, the only hiccup really was that it uh, there was a uh, signature required and uh, I was not home for it and so we just had to arrange for time for them to deliver and uh, we sent for 6 30 
delivery and they showed up at 6 30 so uh and this 6 30 p.m <laughs> so uh and actually i think that was on a saturday too so <laughs> the very very reliable uh mail delivery system here in japan as well and uh also there's this other awesome uh, service called the black cat um and they will deliver basically literally anything almost anywhere look at this beautiful the fog coming through the the, the the mountainside this is one thing that I absolutely love about driving to work uh, so again that's one thing that you need to consider as you commute if you don't like driving uh, some people just absolutely hate driving uh, then this is not for you but if you don't mind an easy drive like in my case right here to the mountains uh, to to the major urban area uh, this is this is just uh, it's kind of relaxing in a way too so I really enjoy this part of the the drive going to work so while we're in the topic of driving let's go ahead and discuss a little bit about reliable transportation so obviously if you're considering uh, retiring in rural Japan or anything for that matter right but we're talking about rural Japan right now your transportation how to get in and how to get out and that was one of the the factors for me is you know yeah I, I go to many uh, real rural uh, towns in here the countryside and it's absolutely gorgeous but but then when you start peeling back the onion you realize oh well gosh this transportation is really difficult right so one thing that attracted me to this particular area right here is that I, I do have reliable transportation uh, if need be obviously right now uh, driving is my main uh, source of transportation uh, but at some point I may not be able to drive for whatever reason right so uh, how can I get out of here so within my from my house there's probably within a five minute walk there's the first bus stop and actually that's where the little bus station is at and from there I can make it to downtown Iwakuni and then also to another station to go towards uh, Hiroshima so from there I can go anywhere in the world by jumping on the airplane we have a small airport there in Iwakuni that will fly you to Tokyo and uh, uh, Okinawa as well so that's my way out and uh, in my particular case being a, a retired military I have access to the military base and then I could if need be uh, use some of the military transportation as well too so um, Again, all those are things that you need to consider when you're looking for a place to retire in rural Japan. And I think another you know, extremely important topic that we kind of overlook when we're still young and uh, healthy, we don't think about that, but you also need to consider is uh, medical care. So I just discussed that we have a little hospital which is you know, good enough for an emergency. I'm, I, I, I can imagine. I've never been there, but uh, here within a short driving distance, I can get to the Iwakuni uh, Japanese hospitals. I can also use a, uh, a military hospital. And then, if you need more and more specialized care, you could go to Hiroshima. And in Hiroshima, they have really, uh, really good hospitals such as the. Uh, Hiroshima uh, University Hospital. Unfortunately, I know several people that have had to use that, Americans that have had to use that service, and they have been hospitalized there for an extended period of time, and but nothing but great reviews. Uh, yes, there is a little bit of the language barrier, but they, they overcome that by providing translation services as well, from what I understand. Um, so, Definitely not impossible and really at a fraction of the cost as it would be in the United States.
right down there is a beautiful view of the ocean. Right now you can't see it because of the fog. However, that's uh, very beautiful too. Talking about things to consider is the road conditions, right? So as you can see right here, we're going through a little uh, back road and um, here shortly, we are going to come to a stop where there was a mudslide a while back and they're still working on it. Uh, these roads are, you know, in really good shape uh, as far as pot potholes and stuff like that go. Uh, but they are, you know, uh, you know, a little narrow. So if you're nervous driving in uh, narrow roads, possibly sometimes in the dark, possibly sometimes in the snow, uh, and if that is a big concern for you, uh, again, uh, this is not for you. And yeah, so here we come because uh, they closed off uh, half of it. Now we have like a four minute wait. So yeah, that's one drawback about this particular particular area is that um, sometimes you hit this and you have to wait. Yeah, so right here it's going to be on video that um, I am going to go ahead and run this red light. <laughs> so if you're a local, you know that at, at a certain point you are safe to go and actually quite frankly this is more than generous uh, so <laughs> one thing that we like to joke about is that you can tell who are who's a local and who's not a local the non-locals they'll wait till the till it literally turns uh, green the, the locals they know at what point they can go safely but again talking about the good the bad and the ugly uh, th this is a possibility uh, this this little stretch right here if you are considering moving to rural Japan uh, yes the government of Japan does a really good job I believe of uh, taking care of the infrastructure and so on uh, but still you know it, it's, it, it can be slow it, you could get trapped in the area or where you have to you know drive a longer route so as you're looking for in place you know take these uh, these kind of uh, things in, in, into consideration uh, in our particular case here there are reasonable three different exit points so I just prefer this way because uh, it's a little bit shorter and less traffic but it could get a little nerve-wracking for someone that is not comfortable with uh, driving in these conditions <laughs> That white van that just passed, that is uh, one of the young carpenters that was working on our house and our uh, uh, vacant house renovation. Uh, if you haven't seen any of those videos, you know, please go back and, 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 and enjoy those. I'm still getting caught up to the, uh, to the completion. Uh, so, I mean, obviously we already live in the house, uh, and, but I have not uh, finished posting uh, videos of the actual completed house. And uh, I'm actually working on uh, a compare and contrast of uh, uh, our current house that we renovated uh, and compare it to the rental that we had for about six years, which is a, uh, a house built in the mid-1990s and so on. But uh, yeah, so <laughs> the young, young guy, uh, really good, really talented. And he was actually telling me that uh, he wanted to start a YouTube channel someday. Look at these kids right here. So they're walking to school that is one this was not part of the plan I kind of thought about what I want to talk about but uh, one thing that I absolutely love about Japan and it's not just the countryside is their um, I guess it is it's very structured school system but what I like is the, uh, the, the fact that kids rain snow whatever they walk to school. I mean, in the big city, they, they literally take the train to school. Uh, little kid, the kindergartners, you see them taking the train in Japan. It really blows my mind. Uh, I, I'm actually saying Tokyo, in other bigger cities, right? It just really blows my mind uh, that they, they take the train alone. But anyways, um, what I really love watching them, like right now it's raining a little bit. They're carrying the umbrellas, walking to school and they're walking the distance we're still driving they're still walking the distance another thing that i just <coughs> excuse me i just can't get enough of is that out here in the countryside uh i think more like uh middle school or more like high schoolers i should say 
is uh, when they come up to the crosswalk and you stop to let them uh, cross, they will one they will hustle across in, in, in with the you know rapid you know wa walking with a purpose, and they will turn around when they reach the end and bow to you in appreciation for letting them go, folks. I mean, not to bash on my country, the United States, but man, what what has happened? You know, we have lost a lot of uh, the basic common courtesy um, skills, <laughs> and uh, but yet that's one thing I really, really love about just Japan in general: uh, politeness, uh, common courtesy. You know, looking out for your your fellow passenger on the train you're not being obnoxious on the phone and again i don't mean to bash them but it's just one of the things i really really do enjoy and when i go back to other countries and again the united states as well it's the, the it's just it's very apparent um especially when you come back to japan it's just so refreshing the customer service and the politeness and so on Yeah, so now we uh, we we are, I guess, um, definitely not in the heart of town, but we are reaching uh, the the city of Iwakuni. So we uh, we came down the mountains, and this is this is uh, where the city kind of begins, I guess. Uh, we're getting ready to turn left. It's towards the Kentai Kyo Bridge, the very famous bridge here in Iwakuni, and then so you're gonna start seeing the typical. Uh, morning traffic and people going to work people going to school uh, that type of uh, uh, activity and uh, so yeah let's go ahead and uh, drive through the town here and you see what I'm talking about <laughs> Here on the left, there's some more kids there going to school uh, with the umbrellas and uh, they're waving goodbye to her parents, that girl. Yeah, um, but again, there's uh, in Japan, they don't have a school bus system uh, like they do in uh, other countries. I believe, I'm not, I'm not an expert at this, but I believe they can um, ride the uh, local transportation at a uh, fraction of the cost or maybe free I'm not quite sure how that works so one other thing too what I would advise so you see here on my right you can see all this traffic building up right here uh, I would I would um, recommend advise you to if you are considering a house anywhere right for that matter quite frankly is to drive it certain times of the day throughout the week so you see all this traffic backed up here on the right side. They are all headed towards the expressway uh, that will take you uh, north towards Hiroshima or south towards Kyushu. Um, and so yeah, so this backs up and it does not affect me because I'm going in the opposite direction. And then uh, leaving my day job and going back home, it's in reverse. So. It worked out quite well for me. Uh, again, again, all these are things that, as you are doing your research on where to retire, is that you should look into this. So right here on the, you see these girls crossing the, the crosswalk. So they're uh, you know, uh, riding their bicycles to school. That's another thing here too, is a lot of the, especially the older kids, they, uh, they will ride their bikes and uh, near the school, they have locations with bike racks and then they can uh, park them there and then finish walking the rest of the way to school. And uh, well, I don't think you can see him, but here on the right side, there was an older gentleman uh, all dressed in yellow with a yellow flag, uh, volunteering as road guards uh, for for kids. It's like this whole system 
uh, which is really cool. And then, uh, from what I understand, like uh, the older kids will look out for the younger kids uh, as they are learning how to get to school. And uh, so they have uniforms and uh, colored hats and everything. So they have this whole system of uh, you know getting to school and coming back. And it's Folks, if you have not heard this before, but I mean, obviously there is crime in Japan, but it is one of the safest countries in the world. I have literally driven many, many, many places in Japan. And I have never, ever felt any danger whatsoever. I've never got any heavy jibbies. Uh, so, and yeah, you know, not to just, you know, I, 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 I've gotten heavy jibbies in many, many other places around the world. Put it that way, and uh, in Japan, never ever. Uh, it's just one of those things that you just feel very safe here. Uh, you, you you feel at peace, and, and the rural side is even even more. Whoa, that kid almost got hit. That knucklehead. <laughs> he he was running in the middle of the road, and that is something that you do not see very often, because uh, <laughs> everyone here is very respectful. But the kid was. Uh, literally running to the train station right here in front of us and he was uh jay running across the street so uh not very good on his part and right here in front of us is the the bus that would actually come to probably to miwa as well so this bus right here uh is coming to the iwakuni nishi iwakuni station which is a station that will take you to the other main station so again there's this huge network connectivity uh, transportation network that will get you literally anywhere it's just a matter of time and patience right so um, if you're retired who cares you have all the time in the world yeah again down here in the far left I'm not sure if you can see it but you see the gentleman in yellow uh, assisting the kids uh, crossing the road going to school again this is a daily daily routine that you see uh, as people get ready to go to to work in school. Kids right here going to school as well. They have to wear helmets, uniforms. All right, folks, so I'll, I'll be reaching the, uh, the, the installation here pretty soon. So I'm gonna turn off the camera here shortly. But again, um, I think what I wanted to do is kind of do some of these series right here because I really do just enjoy showing the raw, the, the the live, the actual how life is here in Japan, rural and here, not so rural right here, right? Um, and if you like what you see, please hit subscribe and share and like and uh, send me some comments and, and feedback and uh, something that you like to see more. And I uh, really, 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 really appreciate um, folks that have been following us along uh, from across the world. It's very humbling, uh, quite frankly, to hear or see people comment and say hello from Scotland, hello from Germany, hello from uh, Aust Australia, Austria, um, the United States. Uh, it's, it's really, again, uh, it's, it's really humbling. Um, so, and again, uh, head on over to uh, Benton uh, Homestead, show them some love, just help them get to a thousand subscribers. Um, and uh, again, I really, really do admire what they're doing. So, hey guys, yeah, hang in there, keep working at it. Uh, once you get the some uh, some honey ready, let me know, and I'll be one of your first customers. All right, folks, uh, thanks again, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this ride.